Hi everyone, and thank you so much for joining me for this next video. Today, we are going to make a small cheese board. And you can use little pieces of scrap that you have laying around your shop to create this project. It's super simple, and it makes for a great gift or a great product to be able to sell at craft shows. So with that said, let's jump into this project. So the first thing that you wanna do is make sure that you have all your wood uh, picked out what you want to be able to you know build your little board with and make sure that it's all planed and jointed down to the correct size now keep in mind i've uh, jointed this got it nice and smooth and i've planed it on the surface and got it nice and smooth and everything that i'm working with here is three quarters of an inch thick that's what you want to work with at least three quarters of an inch now you can go a little thicker than that if you want and I've even made them down to a half an inch, but this is a really good size. So, because keep in mind, you know, after we glue this up, we're gonna be planing this off just a little bit. So it's gonna drop down a little less than three quarters of an inch. But I, what you see here, I have cherry, maple, black walnut, maple, and cherry. Now this outside piece is just a little bit wider than this piece over here, and that's okay. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Um, but what we're going to want to do at this point is just make sure everything's planted and jointed and then we're going to glue this up. And then once this is set, we'll put it back into the planer and we'll get it nice and planed down and flat and ready to go to the next step. Okay, so let's go ahead and glue this up and I'll just show you how I go about gluing. What I'll do is move these outer edges out and I'm going to want glue on this edge, so I'm going to turn it up. I'm going to want glue on this edge. It's the opposite edge, okay, or, or it's the next edge. This edge will glue to here, this edge will glue to here, and so on and so forth. So we just lay that down. That tells us where our glue is going to go, okay? Same thing here, just like that. Now, that tells me that whenever I lay these back down, they're going to be in the right configuration, uh, and uh, they're going to be glued in the right, uh, you know, area. Now, I use Tight Bond 3 and it is a basically a water resistant or waterproof if you will I, they say it's water resistant but it's the best glue to use for this type of thing so we go ahead and just put a little bit of glue right on each piece all right so we're just going to start rolling these back over exactly the way we rolled them up just like that and then just bring them together. Now, the nice thing about this glue is you've got a you know, pretty good amount of time to be able to work with it. So it's not gonna like set up on you quickly like CA glue. Um, it's gonna be really easy to work with. Of course, when we pull this together, it's gonna squirt that stuff out of there. And I like to just take a little piece of scrap and just set on there and just make sure I try to get that as flat as possible on one end, just like so. Of course, we'll be trimming that off, and I'm just going to use some simple little clamps, as you can see here. Okay, so it is the next day, and this is all completely uh, dry, so we're going to go ahead and just take these clamps off of here. And we'll take this over to the um, planer and get this nice and flat. That's what we're going to do next. Now, if you'll notice here, I left these little long ends here, and there's a reason for that. A lot of times when you put wood into a planer, especially when it's small like this, there's a thing called snipe. And it typically happens right at the very end of, you know, the piece that you're planing. So what happens if you leave this a little longer, the snipe happens down here, which is going to be cut off anyway. So that way, when it planes out here, it's nice and clean. Let's go over to the planer. Okay, so when you get ready to start using um, a planer, make sure that you always use your earphones. This machine is very loud and you want to protect, protect your ears as much as possible. And that's all there is to it. You can see how nice and smooth that is. Yep, looks good. The next uh, 
portion of this is to make sure we've got a good straight line on this. So I'm going to come to my shortest piece of wood and then I'm going to come just on the back side of the end of it and put a line across here. And that's where I'm going to start my cut whenever I cut this off. So I'll just line this up with my fence and just cut it right off. Now you can see um, how clean this little fence helps you, you know, get this on the end. Now we'll flip it around and what I like to do is look at my end and see what the lowest part is. And it looks like it's going to be right up here. You know, you could go on either side. So we're going to come in just a little bit, just enough to make sure we get that dip. We're going to bring in just enough on it. And there you go. And you can see we've got a nice clean cut on the end. Okay, so at this point, what we want to do is mark everything uh, that we need to, you know, drill and cut and so on and so forth. So just take a ruler of some sort, come from the outside edge and measure in. And it doesn't matter which side you go on. I prefer to do it this way just because of where I put my line. Now, if I put my line down here, you know, I could do it, you know, from a different angle. It doesn't matter. The point is, is you're going to come over five inches right at the very end, okay? And at the five inch mark, you're going to put a little tick there, okay? That's going to tell me where I need to drill my hole. So I come on the outside edge here and I just put, as you can see, I've already done it. I just put a little circle there. Now that circle tells me where I'm going to actually drill the hole when we get over to the drill press. The next thing that you want to do is take your measure and come over from that little tick three inches and put a line. Now this line right here is what we're going to cut on the table saw and it's actually going to be angled. It's going to be deeper where the hole's at and shallower at the end down here. This is where our handle goes in and uh, the wire comes across where we will cut this line and we'll get to that when we get to the table saw. Okay, so we're over here at the uh, drill press and I got a couple of things I need to show you because um, there's a certain way that you have to set this up. Now, if you have a workbench that has a vise on it, you can do this on a workbench and just hand hold it. I do not have a workbench with a vise on it, you know, on the side of the bench. So it's easier for me just to set this up and I made these little pieces, these little jigs, if you will, that kind of go up against this and I use these spacers to get this piece out here where the, you know, the, the bit is. Now, this is a quarter inch bit. This is the longest one that I have. Now you can get longer quarter inch bits, but this is the one that I have and I have it marked how deep that I need to go because I've made multiple of these. And so as I drill this down, it's only going to go up so far. Then I have to drop, you know, bring this up to be able to get the rest of the depth. So right now where we're at, um, it's going to work to a certain depth and then I'll have to move it. So we'll leave it right there like that and we'll start our drilling process. Let's go ahead and just do a test with our drill bit. That looks good. So we're going to go ahead and get this set right where it's at. And we just hold this in. Now what I like to do at this point is use a clamp. I've got one right here. And I'll take a clamp and just clamp this down really good, okay? Once I know it's going to be lined up right where I need it, okay? That's right where I need it. And I just use that to help stabilize this piece as I'm drilling it. Okay, that's the first part of the drill. Now I gotta just bring this up where this drill bit is gonna go right down inside of there 
to give me the rest of the depth that I need. Okay, that'll do it. We bring it down and now our hole is drilled all the way through this whole area. Okay, we are at the next step of this process. Now you'll notice here I've put a little um, piece of wood on here just to kick this piece of wood up. It's about, I would say, 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. Um, it doesn't have to be very much, but it, it does need to be enough where you've got that angle that goes through. But the next thing that you want to do is you want to drop this blade down where it will clear the hole. So adjust this blade so that it goes just above or the depth of that hole, as you can see there. Let's make sure that is correct. Because see, we're going to be cutting this like this, so it has to clear that. And as long as it clears it, you'll be in good shape. Okay, so this is a very important part of this process. Now you remember we've got our hole here. So we're not gonna cut this where it's like this, okay? In other words, the hole's on this side. We wanna flip this around and make sure that this hole is in the back, it's back here. Because the deeper part of this cut that comes across here is gonna be here. This part's gonna be kicked up, which will be shallower and it'll go deeper down here and go and intersect this, this hole and we take it all the way through. So we just set this on here and we get this lined up. Now, what I like to do is come in here and just put a little line here. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it tells me pretty much where I need to start my cut. And what I'll, and if you'll notice here, there is a, a line or a, a, you know, a, an opening cut in this uh, sacrificial fence. I want to line this line up directly in the center of that. That puts my blade right in the middle. So if I line that up right in the middle, we're good to go. I'll pull it back, press against it, and run it through. Okay, now there is our cut and you can see we're right on that line. That's exactly what we want and we can now go over and put our piece in and fit it, make sure it's gonna fit properly. Let's do that now. All right, so we're back over here at our assembly table and I brought the drill bit from the uh, drill press over and put it into my drill. Now what I like to do at this point is just take my drill and come through here and just clean this hole out. Now don't go any deeper. Just get in there and just, just clean it out a little bit. Just so that whenever you take your handle and you test fit it, it's gonna go in nice and smooth, just like that, okay? You can see how that works. We'll get to that later. I've got a bunch of these. Now you can imagine how simplistic this would be once you start actually working on say 10 or 15 of these right in a row. It's like an assembly line. It just goes very, very quick and you can make these out of just scrap, like I said, from your, um, you know, your shop, just whatever you've got laying around, you know, the shop from other, you know, other uh, projects that you've done. And so what we're gonna use is a quarter inch round over bit in our little trim router here and just go around this on all four sides, well, you know, top and bottom, and, uh, and get it nice and round rounded over. So, and then we'll do some sanding on it. Pretty straightforward. Now I'll take this and I'll round it over with my sander. Okay, pretty straightforward and it makes the piece look really nice. 
Uh, I like to do it that way because I have a little bit more control instead of trying to rely solely on this router bit. So now we're going to take it over here, put a little water on it. Okay, so now we just want to take a little bit of uh, water in a water bottle and just spritz this really good. And what this is going to do is raise that grain up. And once we do this, we just let this set and dry naturally. Okay? And then we'll come back and we'll sand it with 220. Stick around. Okay, so this is completely dry at this point. And what we want to do is sand this. And you can, when you feel this, um, you'll feel the grain raised on it. So I'm just going to use some 400 grit. I said I was going to use 220. I'm going to go ahead and go to 400 um, just because this is so smooth already. And, uh, but basically what you're wanting to do is just knock this grain down. Okay, so that looks really, really good. It's smooth as glass, and that's exactly what we want. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is just kind of inspect this. Just look it over and see if there's anything that you need to do to it. And I think we're in good shape here. Not really anything we need to go in and fix or fill. So the next step is to go to, um, you know, putting our hardware in. Now, some people at this point will go ahead and put their finish on this and let it dry. I don't think it really makes any difference personally. Uh, the way I've done it is go ahead and put your hardware in it because it doesn't matter if you get a little bit of mineral oil on this stuff, it's not going to hurt it at all. So I'm going to go ahead and install my handle, you know, on this. And what we want to do is grab one of our handles and then we have, well, the rod apparatus and then the actual handle itself. Now I'm going to show you how to um, install this properly. So stick with me and I'm going to bring the camera in a little bit closer. To start with, you want to grab your handle and I want to show you right here on the end of this shorter part of the handle, there is a little hole that's drilled into there and that's where a set screw is going to go and we'll get to that. But what we want to do, and this is very important, is you want to make sure that when you put this in, the hole is facing down. Now obviously you can't put it in wrong because um, I the way it's configured. So just make sure that when you put it in the holes down and that's pretty much common sense. And then as you slide it in make sure it's nice and smooth and there's no obstruction. And then of course this is your handle. Now on your handle you've got three things. You've got the handle itself or actually well you've got the handle, you've got a hole, You've got where the handle actually goes into, and then you've got the, um, the little place where the set screw goes in, and there's a groove that's in here. Now, when you put this in, what you want to do is, is make sure that the hole obviously is facing uh, towards your right, because that's where it's going to go onto the piece, right? So you've got a little loop down here at the bottom of this, and what you want to do is just make sure that it's configured properly so that when you put this in, the hole is facing the line. So you just put this right down into the groove and then put the end of this through that loop. Okay, it's really pretty simple. And now once it's in there, you can see it's locked in. You take your handle and you slide it onto this um, part and then tilt this up. Now it's gonna be very, very tight. In fact, you think you're, you know, when you do this, you're thinking, I'm gonna break this line, but it won't break. Now, if you'll notice right here where that slot's at, right next to where the little set screw goes, this line is going to go down into that. So you just take it and pop it right into place, just like that. When you do that, what happens is it allows you to move this right where the set screw is supposed to be. Now, on the set screw, I just use my little drill, and I'll put this on the end, and then just put it right in here. And, and drill it in. Really pretty simple. Now, when you pull this down, you want to make sure that this line goes directly in the center 
of this cut that you have on your board. As long as it's within that uh, you know, center and it's not hitting anything, um, you won't have any problem. Now, if you'll notice right here on the end of this, it's got a, you probably can't see it, but on the end of this where this, is, is, this wire is actually wrapped, there's a little bitty tail that sticks out. Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes, that little tail will actually hit the edge of that groove. To be able to solve that problem, just slide your wire over if you can, or take a little pair of needle nose pliers and just bend it up and it'll be perfectly fine. So when you have your, let's say a block of cheese on here, you just boom, you come right down on it. Obviously we don't have any cheese out here, but, but you get the idea. You, like, you put your cheese in where you want it and it goes right down. This is uh, the completed piece without any finish on it, as you can see. It works really well, and I like the silver. Um, there, I do have some that have the, you know, the black handle and the black rod, which looks really good also. It's really personal preference, um, but I would just choose which handles look best with the type of wood species that you're using for your project. So let's take this over to the other um, you know, table where the finishing is, and let's get some uh, mineral oil on this piece. So we're over here where I do the finishing and you can see here this is the food grade mineral oil that I'm using and like all of my videos I will put links to everything that we've used on this project down in the description. So as you can see our handles on here everything's ready to go. I'm just going to take a rag that's down here in the mineral oil and just start applying the oil directly to the piece. And like I said this mineral oil is not going to hurt this uh, this handle, you can do this however you choose. If you want to do it before you put the handle on, that's perfectly fine. But keep in mind, this mineral oil will dry down and it's not going to hurt anything. However, you do want to make sure that you get that mineral oil down in every little nook and cranny um, that this piece has. Okay, Especially like around, uh, right here where this handle goes in. Just you know, soak it up really good, let it run down inside of there. Just make sure you just overdo it. Just put too much on it and let it sit. Now what I'll do is I'll take just like a little rag or something so I don't get it all over the place and then I'll bring it over to this next station. And I'll just take this piece and just sit it right there on these little cones. You can see these little cones. These things are fantastic and they're great when you're doing any kind of finish work. And just set that right on there and I will let that sit for probably an hour, maybe a little longer, and just let that mineral oil seep down into that wood, and then I'll come back and do the finish work on it, which is just basically getting off any of the excess. And then the next step is to use a little bit of the wood wax, uh, which is designed for cutting boards and so on and just apply a little bit of that. So I'm going to do all of that. I'm not going to suffer you through it because it's really pretty simple. And then we'll take a look at the finished piece. Stick around. Okay, so we got this cheese cutter completely finished. As you can see, um, the cherry and the maple and the black walnut work really well together. I think it came out really nice. Um, keep in mind, these are just scraps laying around the shop. You can see how the handle actually works. And then of course on the back I was able to put some uh, non-marking feet on here, which I really like that. It raises it up off of the counter. Some people don't put feet, they just let it sit right on the counter. I like to put these feet and it just makes it a little bit more stable when it's sitting on the counter and you're actually using it. Um, our coins in the bottom, always wanna try to do that if possible. So, hey, go down in the comments, give me some feedback on this, let me know what you think about it. Have you ever you know, made one of these? And uh, hey, if you're not a subscriber to the channel, consider subscribing. We've got a lot of videos coming. We're going to do a lot of really cool projects, and I'd love to have you here with me as we move forward. So don't forget to hit that like button. And with that said, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.